Okay, so recently I shared a video showing how my brand new GoPro Hero 10 got smashed when it fell off the bonnet of my car during some filming. However, they sent me a new one. Now I don't mean to sound ungrateful because GoPro have actually sent me a brand new Hero 10, but when all's said and done, is it any good? Is it fit for purpose for what I intend to use it for? I mean, GoPro make claims that this is great for vlogging, for live streaming, but when all's said and done, this has been designed to be an action camera for use in capturing content of activities such as motocross, mountain biking, snowboarding, skiing, rock climbing, scuba diving, and skydiving. Kind of. But what if you don't do that kind of stuff? Now admittedly, I am going to be working more with the surf school called Walking on Waves based at Saunton Sands, so that kind of fits into the GoPro world. And I've actually joined a sea kayaking club, but I wouldn't call that an adrenaline sport unless something like a great white shark appeared. But we don't get those in Devon. In all seriousness though, whenever you see footage from GoPro, it's always in the most perfect lighting conditions and there's a ton of different movement going on. But what about using it for filming like B-roll kind of content or maybe even blogging? And would the footage be good enough for viewing on all kinds of different devices of all different sizes? Because people nowadays, they don't just watch it on computers, they watch it on mobile phones and increasingly so on smart TVs. Would the quality of the footage be there? Well, years ago when I got my first GoPro, which is this one here, which is the Hero 5, after just a couple of uses, I would have said a definite no, because after just a couple of uses, it was put back in its box into a drawer and has never seen the light of day since. But when they introduced the Hero 10 and all the hype surrounding it, I had big expectations, but when I got it and I used it, it was still a no. However, with a few tweaks to the settings and managing expectations, and that's the key thing, managing expectations, you can get some good footage. I'm not gonna say great footage, you're gonna get some good footage. And I'm gonna take you through those settings, but what I will say, when it comes to managing expectations, this is a 500 pounds action cam. And 500 pounds is a lot of money, but it's certainly not the cost of something like a, a Sony A7S III or a, or a RED camera, which is going to give you incredible, cinematic footage. This is a £500 action cam. Now I'm going to take you through the settings that I've found which will give you way better footage than if you'd just taken it out of the box and left it in auto. We're going to go through those but before we do I want to just say this. This is not a sponsored or paid for video. Now before I go through the settings let me just show you some footage of the kind of stuff that I would want to film with the GoPro that's now been mixed in with some footage from other cameras as well.
All right, so before I mention the settings, just want to mention something about the device itself because on this Hero 10, as is the case, I believe, with the Hero 9, the actual attachments that you would connect the stands and supports to the device to hold it into place. Now, they're kind of they're built into the device itself. They can disappear into this little recess. The problem with that is it means that you're going to be inclined to use the device without any kind of protection around it. And that's how things like the screen, as in my case, got broken because it was kind of open to the elements. Previous versions, now this again, going back to my Hero 5, it had no such thing. It was just the camera itself and you had to put it into some kind of a protective case to then attach it to the stands. So one bit of advice I would definitely give you is to get some kind of a protective case to put your Hero 10 into before you start using it. Right, let's have a look at the settings. Now, living in the UK, I use the PAL recording region settings as opposed to NTSC. So to change the Hero 10 into PAL, I just swipe down from the top and then swipe to the preferences. In the preferences, choose general and scroll down to where it says anti-flicker. Now in there you have 50 hertz or 60 hertz to choose from. 50 will change the Hero 10 to PAL and 60 will change the region to NTSC. There is no specific button that says change this to PAL or change this to NTSC. You just choose the 50 or the 60 hertz. Next we have video compression and I choose the H.264 option for maximum compatibility. Now heading back to the main screen and then pressing on the settings at the bottom, I have mine to set to capture in 5.3K all the time, unless I'm doing some slow-mo footage. You've paid your money, you might as well get the very best you can out of this device. I also use 25 frames per second. Now for the lens, I tend to use linear most of the time. I do use the horizon leveling because it is insanely good but I'll mention about the hyper smooth in a minute. Okay, so scrolling down, the bit rate is set to high. Now the shutter, unless you're using the GoPro as like a, a grab and go holiday kind of camera to just capture your footage quickly without giving it any much thought, then don't use it in auto, use it in manual. Now I use double the frame rate. So if I'm filming regular 5.3K at 25 frames per second, then the shutter will be set to 1 50th. If I go to 50 frames per second to slow things down, then I'll change the shutter speed manually to 1 100th. If I go to 100 frames a second to really slow things down, I have to change the GoPro into 4K and my shutter speed is then set to 1 200th. ISO minimum is set to 100 and the maximum is set to 800. And again, I use that in manual, not in auto. Now sharpness is set to medium, because I tend to find that low is way too low. It almost looks soft and blurry and out of focus, whereas high is way too much. Color, I use the flat profile. And then if you scroll down to the bottom, you come to the shortcuts area. And this is where you can choose which of these settings you want to have quick access to from the main screen. Now, because I use both the shutter and the ISO in manual, then they are on the home screen, but I also have the hyper smooth and the uh, horizon leveling and the slow-mo on there as well for quick and easy access. So without doubt, you are definitely going to get the very best footage you can from this GoPro when you use it in manual. Don't use the auto shutter and the auto ISO. But when you are in manual, what you'll tend to find sometimes when you're outside is that the scene is incredibly bright on the back of the camera, so you need to darken it down. And that's where these things come in handy, which are these ND filters. Now, these ones I got from Amazon. They're my, uh, by a company called Polar Pro, I think. And I've got an 8, a 16, and a 32. So I can put one of those easily on the front to darken it down so that I can still keep that low ISO and that uh, double the frame rate uh, shutter speed as well. So they work fantastic. But I mentioned about the horizon leveling and the hyper smooth. The horizon leveling works absolutely flawlessly. It is fantastic. But the hyper smooth, what I found was it worked great when I used it on things like my car going over rough ground. That smoothed it out fantastic. If I was walking, it definitely smoothed that out. But if I did a little bit of a jog, 
then what I did tend to find was that it just didn't seem to do it so good. And in fact, it made it almost shake and look as if the footage was a little bit blurry. So uh, definitely not as good, even in the boost setting, definitely not as good as using a proper gimbal like something, the, something like the DJI RS2. Now, what you will find if you look on the internet at the moment, that despite people having done the latest firmware updates, they are struggling with overheating problems on the GoPro and it's shutting down. Now, I've not experienced that, but then that's probably because the kind of footage that I film with it is just short bursts. I'm not filming over prolonged periods of time and I'm not doing extended time lapses. So that's something to maybe consider if you're looking at the GoPro uh, if you're, and if you're thinking of maybe using it for filming stuff that goes on for longer than just a few minutes. So I guess it's very much a case of sorry, not sorry to GoPro. Sure thing, thank you so much for sending out a brand new one, but with it being an action camera, the one I brought shouldn't have broken as easily as it did. But the footage is good so long as we manage expectations, and I would highly recommend diving in and using those manual settings as opposed to auto, especially if you're a content creator or a filmmaker or whatever you want to call it. The difference in the footage from auto to manual is very, very noticeable. But the footage is good. It's not great unless the lighting and the conditions are perfect. And it's certainly not a DJI Pocket 2, which I absolutely love. But with the way this is built, having a gimbal, there are times and places I wouldn't want to use this because it could get broken. That's when I would use the GoPro Hero 10. So it's very much a case of horses for courses. Now, with regards to the settings that I've gone through in this video, I've added those into the description part, along with any extra little kit that I use as well. If you've enjoyed watching this video, definitely give us a thumbs up, give us a like. Uh, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. It's just a great free way that you can support this channel. Uh, and it kind of, yeah, it's a bit of a booster for me. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in a week's time.